Welcome back to the job site. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make your own shiplap. This is really easy to do and we're going to actually use a lap joint in this video. I have another video where I show how to install a faux shiplap where you basically just put two boards together like this without the lap joint and you just space them evenly. But in this video we're going to actually use the lap joint. I recommend using a router table. This is going to be your best, easiest way to do it. You could use a table saw or a, you know use your router in your hand but that's going to be a lot more difficult than what I'm showing you here. This is a half inch rabbit bit and it has a bearing on top and the wood is going to just glide along that bearing as it cuts it out. So I have this half inch rabbit bit with the bearing that's going to stop the depth of the cut. So all I need to find once I have this bit in my router table is how high do I need to adjust my bit. And I'm going to show you that right now. I'm going to take a straight edge and then pull my pivot fence over until the fence is lined up with the straight edge on both sides and the bearing rolls. So right there I'm set up. Now I have that rabbit bit in there. What I need to do is figure out how high I need to make it. Now you can see here this when I say one by six and if you're familiar with woodworking one by means three quarter inch thick. So if you look at that I'll burn an inch and show you it's three quarters of an inch. So since this is three quarter inch material, I just need to split that in half and that'll be three eighths. So I'll just go to put it right on that two inch line and just go to three eighths. And that should be right at half. So with that, now all I gotta do is raise that rabbit bit up to where the top of it is right on that pencil line right there. And it is because I already had this set up previously before we started filming. So you can see with that rabbit bit, it gave me this lap joint, or at least half of the lap joint. Now what I'll do, I don't want to lap joint this side again. I don't want to take out from this side of the board, this plane of the board. I want to flip the board on its back and then take out from this side of the board. So these are going to be staggering. So I'll show you what I mean. Basically this is going to be flipped on opposite side. So after I routed that last side of this board, you see that they're on opposite ends. So you're going to have this lap cut out and this lap cut out. And you can see if I had two of these, they would be able to join together and create the lap joint. So I'll go ahead and do the same exact thing to this other board. So after I routed that last piece, I have now two boards that I can join with the lap joint and they're flush. And you can see that they are flush on both sides, both boards are flush. And that's where you're gonna wanna make some samples and micro adjust so you can get these boards to be flush on both sides because that's gonna be important when your boards are coming together. And you would do that by just raising and lowering this to get exactly halfway. So make your micro adjustments with samples before you rip your pieces that you're gonna use on the project. And when I lay this down flat, it's nice and flush all the way across. Now with this look of shiplap, what we'll actually do is we'll put a spacer, probably something skinny like this in there. And when we install the boards, we'll just have this straight edge in there and it's going to be a nice architectural look having that line of shiplap because if you do it like this where you just push it together there's really no reason to even make this lap joint because you could just squeeze two pieces of wood together and why waste your time on the lap joint but now one thing we, w we will need to do and i'll get into this now is that when you have two pieces come together like this which is going to happen when you have a joint 
or a seam like this. Now what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to, it's going to be the same exact setup as far as this router table and fence, but I'm actually taking my miter gauge from my table saw over there and this router table has a slot for it. And what I'll do is I'll dial this in to where this swivel right here of the back fence of this miter gauge is flush. Both this is flush and this is flush with the fence of the router table. And then I know I'll tighten this down. Then I know when I pass through on the bearing, it's going to be perfect. This gives me something good to push against. And it's, this is very safe because if you try it without this, it's, I've tried it before and it's super sketchy because you can get it in here and it like wants to go in. It wants to like pull in and stuff. So I definitely recommend using the miter gauge and just pushing through. So I'll show you that right now. So you saw me just pass through the bit right there using this miter gauge like I was showing you. And now what I want to do, what, what you can do to think of this to help you not mess it up is just take the board and make it do a flip towards you. And what that'll do, you can see over here, I have this lap joint cut out now on the long side of the board and on this short side on the end grain. So I got it going with the grain and on the end grain. Now I want that same cut out on the end grain, but on the opposite side. So whenever these boards come together, it'll be similar to hardwood flooring where they join up and link in every direction. So after I made it do the flip, and the easiest way to think of it is you should see the side that you just cut, you should see that cut out part facing up at you. If you see this, you're wrong. So make sure you can see what you cut and then we're gonna run this one through. Just gonna knock down some of those fibers. And I'll usually wear a respirator or dust mask or something, but for the sake of the audio and the video, I don't wear that when I'm showing you this stuff. So here's what you should end up with overall. These boards should link like this, like I showed you in the beginning, being flush and then the same thing from side to side. So they should be flush like that. And when we put these in on the wall, we'll actually space them the same way and we'll still have the wood showing through in the back. So there you have it. That's how easy it is to make your own shiplap. It's a simple process. I think, the just to recap, I would say the most important things about this is number one, when you have your rabbit bit, you want to make sure before you start milling out your boards that it's at the perfect height, which is exactly half of the width of whatever thickness of wood you're using. So we have three quarter. You can see I've got three eighths here and three eighths here. And that'll allow for a flush finish when they come together. That's going to be key. The other thing is as you're pushing these boards through to get that flush finish, you want to have constant pressure against the fence or the bearing if that's all you're using and downward pressure because if you don't have that then you're going to have unevenness when you go to link them they're not going to be flush and then the last thing if you're seriously consider considering doing this just be ready to be out here at the router for hours i think this is probably going to take us take me about four hours to mill all these boards out so we got this huge stack right here that we've got to do all this too. So if you're considering doing shiplap, I hope this video helped you. I hope it showed you how easy and simple it is, but it is time consuming. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Take care.